Tune in. Tone up. Your one-stop shop for guitar, tricks, tips, techniques and advice. With me, Gary Shilliday, and my own excellent teacher, Dan Davis. Hi there, Dan. Hi, Gary. How's it going? Pretty good, thank you. Yeah. Feels like eons. It's been quite a long time. I've uh, been a long time. I've been gigging myself. You've been gigging as well. I have. Like gig monster that you are. Trojan. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, I had a gig on Saturday, so a lot of effort went into that. And uh, mm. my next uh, guitar-related outing is uh, at the end of the month, so just uh, three or four weeks away, pretty much three weeks away, uh, for my uh, sister and brother-in-law's wedding. So big shout out to Matt and Angela. Well, hey, congratulations, because you'll be married by the time I put this out. And um, yeah, they've asked me to do a few songs for their wedding. Okay. So I've got today with me, I've got my Tanglewood, but I might play my Gibson J45. I haven't decided yet. This is your Billy Bargain. This is the Billy Bargain. Billy yeah. Bargain, Bargain Bucket of the Year guitar, wasn't it? Here we go. With the open pour technology, whatever that means. It looks like someone's opened the pores there. Oh, like yeah, hitting it rather hard. <laughs> praying. But yeah, it was um, re- sounds really nice after a setup from Pedro at uh, um, Brighton Guitars Repairs. Thanks, Pedro, for that, and it just sounds great for a for a relatively cheap guitar. So yeah, this will probably go out. It's got the piezo in it, so at some stage Happy I'll days. get it mic'd up for um, for the gig probably. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm finding myself at the moment doing a lot of live work, but I'm depping an awful lot. So yeah. while I am doing some work with the, the regular bands I play with, I seem to be catching lots of different stuff Yeah, at the yeah. moment. You know, I was depping with a band on Saturday night, just playing guitar. But then I've got an acoustic gig coming up. I had, I had a weird run of three gigs a couple of weeks ago where it was all drop tuned to match the guy's voice. Yeah. So that required a bit of work to make that sound half sensible. Um, and a borrowing of a guitar. I it? did. I borrowed. I borrowed <laughs> Alice Lesbo and, and the drummer I work with. It turns out he'd done he'd done work with Phil Hillborn and he stood in for Pete Riley on some Guthrie Govan gigs as well. Goodness me! I know. And he's a beatboxer. Wow, that's incredible. So I was subject <laughs> to watching live from the from the from the stage a bird's eye view. The guy beatboxing halfway through the set. Fantastic. But okay. Goodness. So yeah, some interesting gigs. Interesting well, things, yeah. I'm playing with Willie Austin soon. Nice. Um, Going to do a couple of gigs with him. He's sort of a local guy who I've been playing. I had, used to play with many years ago. And I have an acoustic gig coming up as well where I'm standing in for someone else. Who knows what's around the corner. <laughs> yeah. So we have broken out our acoustic guitars. Here a, we are. A Taylor 314. Rosewood Limited. I like this guitar a lot. It is my one and only decent acoustic, which I use for everything. Um, it's beautiful. And it's it really cool. Is. It's, it's expensive, but it's not outrageous. Mm. Reassuringly expensive without being ostentatious. Just top to one thousand, is it? Um, no, you entertain. Well, when I got it, it was, it was about fifteen fifty, but I think they yep. probably... You can't get this combination anymore. They did a run of a hundred guitars in two sixty two fifteen, sorry, two thousand yeah. fifteen. But now if you want the regular version of this, the regular three one four will cost you probably about seventeen, eighteen, I think. Okay. Okay. And yeah. Not cheap. But it's a And am I right you got a like great a, sounding guitar. You got a piezo mixed with a compressor compression mic inside it of you. actually isn't a piezo. Ah, it's just not a piezo at all. No. Oh, okay. You have two sensors. I think they call it the Expression 2 system. Ah, I yes. believe you have a sensor down here somewhere. And I think there's one possibly under the neck. And you, you blend the two sounds together. So you're actually kind of blending something which isn't a piezo at all. So you don't have that artificial sound that a piezo oh, only nice. sound has. <laughs> well, it sounds, you know, it sounds good. Mm. It sounds good. If you use one of those um, words of the wise, and if you, if you don't know already, and you're playing, and you're doing an acoustic gig, I have one of those rubber inserts. It's oh, not yeah. rude. <laughs> one of those rubber inserts, 
<laughs> which, which you insert in your hole. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I've you, said nothing. <laughs> and that, that it stops all the air moving around inside and kind of... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so... You, Always helpful. Absolutely. <laughs> so it blocks off the sound hole. It actually makes a huge difference to the sound pressure levels that it will take without yeah. feeding back live. You do right. maybe mm, you lose a little bit of what you're hearing, possibly. It does make the guitar sound slightly different yeah. because you're not just taking the sound off the bridge and processing it with a preamp. Yeah. So, but actually, you know, in the, in the greater scheme of things, the trade off is you can get it loud with no problems. Okay. Anyway, and it still sounds good. That sounds lovely, your guitar there. So, that's great. Yeah, you asked for your. Billy Bargain guitar. Yeah, pretty it's happy with this. Fisherman pickup. Bargain of the week. It is a piezo. Well, but, it was an, e um, an eBay jobby. It was a Facebook marketplace jobby, I think it was. And the guy uh, was giving up guitar and playing bass. Um, done festivals and stuff with it. I think it's seen quite a lot of use. And uh, he sold this along with a few pedals, including a tuner pedal and bicycle pedal. reverb one. Yeah, a couple of bicycle <laughs> pedals. Um, a lot of quite a few wires, hard case, and everything. It was under three hundred pounds. I gave it a setup with that, Pedro. What guitar? What, what price was that? Because I was supposed to resell that. Brand new. They're supposed to be nearly seven hundred quid. I think maybe even topping it. Yeah, okay, what's the offer like? Exactly. Yeah. So just remember, people. When I say to people, I say to my students, you know, you could, you could go and look at second hand guitars. Yeah. The look on their face is like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I'll actually, tell you, I'll do it all, all day, every day. <laughs> actually, there's there's some really great, you know, mm. guitars. I sold you that 335. That was a lovely, lovely guitar. Really bargain. Playing that on Saturday night, actually, Dan. See, for a couple of a uh, good home. It, it certainly did, yeah. Like yeah with the new, know. with those pickups in it as well from uh, Iron Gear. Pretty sound good. Sound brilliant. It sounds oh, really good. good. Sounds really, really good. So, without further ado, yeah, let's you've been on. asked to play, and your sister, is your sister or sister-in-law? Uh, sister-in-law. So, my, um, uh -huh. my wife's sister is marrying uh, Matt, who uh, also plays a little bit of guitar and stuff, and okay. uh, she'll be joining, um, he'll be joining our, our lovely family, <laughs> or so uh, we might say. I have to tell the story. <laughs> Go sorry, on. sorry, I hate to interject. No, please Talking do. of no pressure. All right. You know, like I said earlier, I do a lot of depth gigs, right? And um, I get this, I get this call a few weeks ago, probably a couple of months ago now. Yeah, I'm having a good day. Sun's out. I'm looking forward to a free weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. You want me for what? Oh, where T is it tonight? <laughs> God. How much? Oh. Got to do it, haven't I? Anyway, <laughs> so long, long story short, I get offered this debt gig as a bass player. You've done a bass gig? Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I looked like a bass player, clearly. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, you're all fat and bald. <laughs> so I, I, I have bass gear, which I, I sometimes do, do actually kind of do bass gigs. They're kind of fun. Guitar players are already in place. Yeah. And I get to this gig... And I didn't know it was the wedding of a guy who I'd played with before who was a guitar player. I actually plays for a fairly well-known band that do a lot of festivals here and abroad called Monument. Heard of Monument, yeah. Yeah, the kind of like an Iron Maiden -y kind of. But yeah. Dan Ball, I mean, Dan is a... I've definitely heard he's of He's a beautiful yeah. man in the is nicest he the, possible way. Is he the way. drummer? Or the guitar? No, he's yeah. the guitarist. He's the guitarist. He's yeah. a beautiful human being. You know, yeah. He's a really lovely guy. And um, so I was glad I was gigging for him. But along with him, his singer was there. Yeah. Virtually everybody you spoke to... Was a musician. Yeah. You, know, <laughs> no like, you walk yeah. past conversations, you give some Fender, I'm an ex Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you go, okay, I'm amongst guitar players. And the guy who got up and sang with us all night was a guy called Rasmus, who sings for British old school metal band, Diamond Head. Oh, uh, Yeah. Yeah, that's, that sounds really familiar. Yeah, 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 so I'm basically, it's a who's who. Yeah. 
of like the, the, the underground world of British rock and roll. Brilliant. And there I am. And you think, yeah, no pressure. Playing the bass. <laughs> yeah, playing not by I, instrument. I, I tell you what, I bet it was a brilliant gig, wasn't it? It was damn good fun, yeah. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's good. But yeah, it's just that funny kind of thing, do you know what I mean, where... You know, you, you think, oh, yeah, it's just a wedding, just another wedding, just a load of other guests and volleyballs. And, uh, <laughs> you turn up and it's like, everyone is a guitar player. <laughs> and, and everyone's got a video recorder. <laughs> Holy hell. <laughs> 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 oh, nice one. Congratulations. Yeah, so it was, yeah. 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 So I've got, you know, I actually had a very good night. I've got You've been playing well. with the drummer from that band as well, Monument, or? I haven't played no. with the drummer, no. Well, Lee uses uses Dan as a depth guitar player quite a lot. Ah, right. Okay. And we actually did another gig a couple of weeks ago, uh, Savannah's in Hayes Heath on a Thursday night, and Dan came down and played bass for it, and I played guitar. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's <laughs> so good. So, you know, it's all good fun. It's all, all one big musical family. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, 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 you're at that point where, yeah, you're definitely... Uh, Definitely much requested for, I think. It's good. quite, it's quite nice. I quite, yeah, I quite like it. Yeah. It makes me feel good. I'm, I'm yeah. like, I like something which makes me feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's, it does make. You feel, I've been asked to play this wedding. It made, it's made me feel good, but I'm a little yeah. bit um, apprehensive. Want it to be good? Yeah, I've got to play uh, a song while everyone's milling around and talking. Right, and that's kind of down to me, my choice. So I might just play one that I know already or I might pick your brains I haven't really decided yet I could do um, Here Comes the Sun all day really so I might do that um, then I've got to play a song by We Are Scientists and they did an acoustic version the song's called Textbook great song and the acoustic version's relatively easy and I think that's while uh, Angela will be going up the uh, aisle so to speak <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that'll be that moment. Before, before our husband goes up the aisle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was going to share this with them, but, uh, but yeah, well, maybe not now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and then uh, I think while they're signing, I'm going to be playing um, the Elliot Smith song, Pretty mm -hmm. Ugly Before, which is a great tune by a great artist who I hadn't really checked out much before, uh, before being asked to do it. And finally, and I don't know where it fits in, I don't want to know by Fleetwood Mac. No idea where that's going to go. <laughs> How does this help our listeners? Not at all. <laughs> well, what we're going to do, we're going to look at some of the songs. Um, I think we're going to look at at least a couple of them. And I'm just going to see if there's anything I can add or, or critique Gary's performance for to help him kind of get the most out of them. Yeah, okay, that sounds good. Really? Yeah, cool. If I can. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you're the kind of person who just wants to forward all the jokes <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the yeah. pants out. Yeah. Fast it's, forward to this moment. Fast moment. forward two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so um, do you want to show me what you got? Uh, what, shall I start with Here Comes the Sun or? Um, or I'll start with Textbook? Textbook. I think Textbook you're kind of safe with, aren't you? I think I'm pretty safe. So I would There's not a lot to add to that. Leave that yeah. one, maybe, and yeah. move on to the uh, Elliot. The Elliot Smith one. Elliot okay. Smith. So uh, for that, I've got this kind of.
the solo outbreak that I haven't really looked that much yet then as well. But yeah. Okay. And one thing you could try and do, um, you've got the slide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It might even be crisper still if you did like a hammer on pull. <laughs> Something else you could, good. you could do which might bring it to life a little bit because people home in on the words. Yeah. You would you would think that I would love nothing more than to sit and listen to instrumental music. Yeah. You know, I you know, stick on Satch's Flying in the Blue Dream or something. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, I've played plenty of that stuff and I've learned a lot from, from it and I do yeah. appreciate the time and skill involved in some respects when you're writing melodies it's it's not as easy as just working with a singer who sort of scribbles down some words and does half of the work for you yeah so yeah. i get how intensely difficult that is yeah but i think from a listening point of view i grew up listening to songs and i like listening to songs yeah you know i yeah. grew up with listening to what my sister and brother put on the on the radio Me too. Or, or put on the record yeah. player and I like good songs and while I do like extended guitar solos that sound really great I also like those solos that kind of get in there say what they've got to say and get the hell out of there yeah yeah they sort of ramble yeah yeah I mean like Richie Sambora is like amazing for those sorts of solos I really think yeah. he's a great player I think he's highly underrated and he really does get in there play with just what you want to hear and get the hell out of there again. Yeah. You know, there's definitely time for, for sort of the more extended ramble. Yeah. You know, there are definitely times when that's appropriate. Yeah. But having said that, you don't have the luxury of vocals here. No. So, so trawling around a fairly repetitive, although clever, chord progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could leave your audience feeling a little they bit... They might not know the song, for instance. I mean, it's obviously they've they chosen it. They probably don't way. know the yeah. song. But what you could do is maybe try, try it where you're doing fills. So let's play it again. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to do fills over certain chords. Mm. Okay. Just to, I'm going to have you back in me because what you could do... And I know this sort of harks back to you talking about there being different guitar parts. Yeah. Because we're bound to have somebody say so if we don't bring it up now. You've got a loop pedal. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about, um, I've talked about that in, it for this gig really, but just thinking about it, yeah. It, it could be a good opportunity to break it out for even the second guitar part that you were referring to. It was this song, wasn't it? Was it so I know uh, the different song. That one, yeah. With Matt song. Um, but you could certainly record the backing and use it mm. to great effect. To because you you know if you start bringing some sort of melodies and lead work into it, you know you could extend that song yeah. by quite a bit and still hold people's interest. That's right. Yeah. So I'm going to add some fills in where I think appropriate. Okay. Or, um, <laughs> so three, okay. Four. Two.
Chuck the loop on, and then just go for it. Let me tell you a story. Right, should I do that? <laughs> you should. You should. Hadn't well, thought of that. That's oh, good. Thank you, Dan. That's all right. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, so, sometimes it's just a little push in maybe the right direction, which is needed, isn't it? Just to yeah. assess another person's angle. Some years back, I mean, we are going quite a few years back, about 12 years ago. Yeah. Um, I had a, a sort of an okay Yamaha acoustic. Yep. Which I could put through with an amp or PA system. And that was really all I had going acoustic wise. After that, I got a bit better kitted out with yeah. nicer stuff. Beautiful, though. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say that already? Yeah, I really like it. I, I, I use this guitar for an awful lot of lessons in schools and things. See, see the top and Rosewood, yeah. Rosewood back and side is mahogany neck. I think it's Ebony Fingerboard. Ebony, oh, yeah. See the top, yeah. Nice. Rosewood back and side. Um, I got asked to play a funeral mm. in our system, mm. and I thought, mm, funeral, and I thought, I don't really want to sing, mm. that means I've got a source of PA system, I don't really want to do that, but I thought, acoustic guitar, I can plug that through a little baby amp, I'll get yeah. away with that, because I'm just background noise, I was going on after a harpist. Oh, okay, no pressure. New. <laughs> so you know, massive, great, oh. bling. Oh. Um, I thought, what can I do? I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll, I'll kind of think up a list of songs that kind of work acoustically. Yeah. That I can just kind of trawl around. Yep. And kind of, you know, I didn't have a loop pedal, so I just got a loop them myself. And it worked quite well. Also, yeah. you like playing chords and filling. A bit of both. So, yeah, you know, because, you know, on acoustic, if you haven't got a loop pedal, mm. And you haven't, you know, you can't necessarily always keep the bass notes going. You know, you could have a rhythm like. <laughs>
you know, so you nice. your chords are giving you a bit of the backdrop. Yeah. And then it's giving you enough enough to kind of then fill the space with something appropriate. Yeah. Okay. So I'm often when I'm playing lead in that respect, I'm borrowing maybe from the chord tones. Yeah. You know, it's a... <laughs> That's quite arpeggiated, but you get the idea when you're mm. borrowing from the chords. Listeners will agree with me when they say that that, that works. <laughs> That's the net. When you outline the chords, it, it's sort of a similar thing to when you brain's filling in the gaps almost. Yeah, yeah. if you think of like different kind of sizes of band. Hmm. Well, say you've got a band where you've got the absolute works going on. You've got backing singers, keyboard yeah. player. You've got another guitarist. You've got bass drum, bass, bass player drummer and front man vocalist you've got so much instrumentation yeah you are so much harmonic support yeah you know going on you know you don't need to give it maybe when you could give it thought obviously but you don't necessarily need to fill the audience in with anything because they've got it all there already and then when you play in a four piece it sounds that much bigger Mm. Than maybe a three piece, you know, and you've got someone else playing the chords, giving people that harmonic information. Yeah. So, again, once again, you know, they've already got the information. You don't need to necessarily fill them in unless you want to. But when you're playing in a three piece, and especially when you're playing on your own as an acoustic player, an mm. artist, you know, you really are lacking, unless you're going to put it on a loop pedal, if you're on your Jack Jones, you are lacking possibly that. Yeah. harmonic input so you do have to kind of maybe think carefully about the licks and keeping mm. them with the chord changes so that it all kind of well my loop works. pedal's got like two two um it's an interesting thought as well I, i'll play around with it all actually mm. I'm, I'm definitely gonna be putting a bit of time into this over the next few weeks but um it's got a couple of tracks which you can you can slide it with your foot yeah it's not the best deal in the world Really you can even maybe just lean down, yeah. But it's, there's possible there's a possibility of like recording on the fly a bit of a kind of yeah. or something, and then and then leaving that going while you then do the whole. That would add a little bit of rhythm to it, wouldn't it? And then you could have that pre-recorded over the top, chuck the second track in. Or something, yeah. And just uh, you can certainly do that. I mean, you you yeah. have to think about what's what are you prepared to leave to the night? Yeah. You know, are you well versed enough in using a loop pedal to kind of just sort of rip through it and put it in on the day, or would you do it beforehand? Or well, I think I think this whole thing. <coughs> mm -hmm. All of that, I put the whole thing in. All, like all the way through all the bars, right up to the F and the. So you've got the whole loop. 
Yeah. I put that in before the night, and then on the day I play that live mm-hmm. to give the illusion that it's not there already. Cheating, <laughs> I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I'm going to cheat. Yeah. Uh, Gary's yeah. pretending to be Katie's tungsten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't got enough time to be Katie tungsten, but I'm going to try. Yeah, does that sound like? I mean, that sounds like. Well, yeah. then the rhythm yeah. might be different. That's the issue, I suppose. I mean, hmm. if you're putting it in before and you're using the same guitar and the guitar is in tune, it yeah. shouldn't be a problem, should it? No, it's just uh, tempo. Oh, oh, yeah. Ooh, I haven't thought of that, but. There is that. Political. There's, yeah. a, there's lessons to be Maybe learned. Maybe I'll just do it on the fly. I'm not actually doing it. Yeah, actually do it. Why not? I mean, there, there's definitely lessons to be learned, I think, you know, from, from a number of different outfits that you might play in. Yeah. You know, it, I think it's a, a little bit, the you know, the rock guitarist way. Mm. Sometimes, for some people, is to get a scale and blast. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and actually, what you need to do with this sort of thing is really think a little bit more about the chord changes. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, you don't get it in any other form of music. You know, country guitarists very much play to the chord. Yeah. They very much very play true, around yeah. the chord that they're being given. Um, jazz guitarists, absolutely. You know, the chord progression is everything. Yeah. You know, the, the scales don't drive the chord choices. The chords drive the scale choices. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, unfortunately, in rock guitar, we seem to have a bit of an epidemic of, <laughs> of people thinking it's the other way around. Yeah. And it really is a case that it's the, it's the, the chords that drive, you know, the harmonic content. They contain what's note-wise in a piece. Yeah. Therefore, to a degree, a large degree, they dictate what's going to work and what's not going to work. doesn't mean you can't play outside. Yeah. doesn't mean you can't play outside notes. But what it does mean is that, you know, the core of your scales that you're likely to use without clearing the pub. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. <laughs> are, are, are going to be, you know, restricted dependent on the chords that you've got going on there. I mean, this is all A minor, isn't it, really? But it's got that E. Well, it's got, the, sort of got the G there, and the G has actually got the major seven in it, which push which the F sharps. So that puts you kind of in G. Oh yeah. And then when you go to the F, of course you're back into C. Yeah. Gotcha. And you got the E seven as well, which is. So the E seven. Got G sharp in there now. like a, an E mix of Lydia over that. Okay, and uh, finally, just we were going to have take a quick look at I Don't Want to Know by Fleetwood Mac. Not a song I'm familiar with, but... Great tune. Fresh ears. I think yeah. it's uh, I think it's something like this. It's got this other bit, guys, uh, at the beginning. And that's it. Uh, that's the whole structure. That's like the... Where would you be playing? What part of the wedding would you be playing? I think that's going to be after they're finished and everyone's kind of leaving, I think. Okay. So possibly on that basis, literally a couple of loops like that and play it in a different place as well, fill out, so that, so that it's, 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 it's round. Really, it's really difficult when you deal with, I don't know with your, with your brother-in-law and sister-in-law to be, how musical they are. Um... 
I think his mum's quite musical okay. on, on the piano. Good. I mean, one yeah, thing, like, one thing we found as a, as a band, and I found, you know, just in general as a musician, is that most people aren't. <laughs> most people aren't. And when, yeah. you, when you deal with it all the time, you know, we've had this with well, a sort of slightly different tack. Um, we had this with the wedding. Yeah. Where we sat down with a couple and said, you know, you're more than welcome to pick from our song list. And they were looking at the song list, and of course, years ago, we did do Run to the Hills by Iron Maiden. Ouch. Yeah, and they wanted it at their wedding. Yeah, that's a bit. And then, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm not sure that's, you know. That needs rehearsing. Sure that right girl would not be more appropriate. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, there were plenty of kind of like dancey rock tunes to pick from. Yeah. You know, and it's not that it's necessarily loads, loads heavier than something like living on a prayer it's just like the whole the whole subject matter the whole vibe of the band and everything it's, it's just not the kind of stuff unless someone was like a, a maiden fan yeah you would expect that they would like ask for a wedding yeah you know, <laughs> and also you've got everybody from 18 to 80 there uh, generally a wedding set is considered a fairly maybe bland set of party tunes that kind of please everybody yeah um yeah you might have one in there which is a bit one or two which are a bit rockier some people, you know, want a want a wedding a wedding packed with rock songs, but you know, metal that's a slightly different thing. Yeah, yeah. There's some um, pretty hard rhythm so, in there, isn't it? That's it. And so, and so you know, we 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 sort of we to start with, we kind of guided them away from that choice, um, and then in the end, one of the sons of one of their guests wanted to get up and play drums, and they allowed it. And he wanted to do the Iron Maiden song, so it got played at the wedding after all. <laughs> oh, right, there but you go. My, my point being that sometimes what's appropriate, what kind of what is going to work, not just how appropriate it is, but, but how much it's going to work in the certain situation that you find yourself in, it can be a tricky one if you're letting your your people, because you know you, they are paying for it. So sometimes, I mean, yeah, not in your case, time, but yeah, in many yeah. cases, they're paying for it. Mm. So you do have to let them make their choices. But at other they're, times, they're paying do, for it in the sense that I will be his brother-in-law for the rest of his life. Paying <laughs> He's paying it. for it dearly. That's, that's that's many many you know birthdays and Christmases where I'm sure you'll be showered with. Pedals, capos, slides. Oh, and yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> Maybe they can watch this again, eh? Maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, when people hear a song with vocals on it, mm. they don't really know what the song sounds like without vocals on it. Mm. And for many pop songs and rock songs, understandably, the vocals are really half of what it's all about. That's carrying the tune to a degree, that's carrying the melody. Yeah. And, and so I'm going to loop you know, this one as well. It's an easy one yeah. to loop, isn't it? And then just play the melody mm. nicely. But do, do you know that. what I mean? You know, yeah. you you know, people ask for what they think they want. Yeah. You know, I think Tim was telling me. It's interesting. Tim was telling me about. I know it's a same sort of idea, but a different analogy. He was saying that when Guthrie Govan sort of was offered by Sir to, you know, for John Sir to build him a guitar. Yeah. I think Guthrie had he had the whole range. You know, he had a modern, he had a Strat, he had a Tele, mm. he had all kinds of Sir guitars. So always try them all out on loan from Sir or given to him by Sir or whatever. And in the end, it was John who sat him down, I think, and said, "Can I make a suggestion? What you actually want is this. Trust me. This is what you need to do your job. This, nice. this, this is." Yeah, this will work and sometimes when it comes to kind of weddings that's almost what you have to do with a wedding couple yeah it's sort of saying are you sure you want that song you know think about what you've got at your wedding I think this would work really well yeah you want this yeah, trust yeah, us yeah, 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 yeah. we do hundreds of weddings this is what you want yeah and um, sometimes I think a couple's thinking of their best judgment is not always the best judgment of the situation. So when you've got a song without vocals, unless it's got a really strong melody or it's just sitting in the background like wallpaper, mm. it may not hang together in quite the same way. 
Or your later comments on. later from the couple, like, did you play that such and such one we asked for? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, so I sat there for 15 minutes playing the <laughs> <both> thing. <laughs> oh, I didn't hear it. Yes, because you didn't recognise it without vocals. Yeah, yeah. So th- yeah, there is that, thing, isn't that it? sort of guiding and goading thing. You know. So you play the melody. That's it. It. Either that or something that's particular. I mean, you, you know, if you get something like Stairway, it's so like I did at that funeral. Best pain gig I ever did. And you can yeah. include the melody in there. where you're half including the melody in it. Yeah, nice. That's and good. That's so, how so it kind of works. And the guitar yeah. by is so specific, they, they couldn't, you know. Okay, yeah, so bearing that in mind, I'll look at that, yeah. Yeah. yeah anything like that where you yeah. can knock out the melody with it easily. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I mean, they've asked for specific things, but, you know, I'm just sort of putting you in the picture with, with, with weddings. People sometimes think they know what they want. Yeah, they might. They, they might yeah. sometimes be best, best, best guided, guided towards what would work. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you very much, Dan. Right. Cheers. Thanks. <laughs> Stay tuned for more episodes, jams, improvisation ideas and well-informed thoughts about amps, pedals and guitar tone. If you enjoy this podcast, leave us a review on iTunes, find us on SoundCloud or see our website on tunein-toneup.com. Here you'll find show notes, tabs and further research and resources. It's also a good place to get in touch. We hope you're finding these lessons as interesting and as useful as I do and if you have any suggestions, we'd love to hear them. Hey.